Welcome ladies and gentlemen to 2019. Here are 20 Android apps that you should check out to get the year started off right. Quick disclaimer, none of these apps I'm about to show off are sponsored or in other words have paid me to include them in this video. I genuinely think all these apps are amazing no matter how many downloads they have. So thumbs up for that. I'll also be giving away over 100 promo codes and five $10 Google Play gift cards. All you have to do is follow me on Twitter at HowToMan for a chance at winning one. Anyways, let's start it off right with some wallpaper apps. The first one is called AMOLED Walls and the second one is called WallHub. Both are created by the same developer and I absolutely love his creations. AMOLED Walls is for those who want a dark themed background. Perfect if you have an OLED cause it'll save you some battery and the true black background will really make the icons and widgets pop on your home screen. If you prefer bright and colorful walls instead, then WallHub is a great alternative. It has plenty of categories to choose from, including abstract, material, minimal, and even a few YouTuber walls. Yours truly is included. But yeah, both apps have over a thousand walls to choose from in Quad HD, so definitely check them out. Thanks to the developer, I'll be giving away 50 promo codes to AMOLED Walls Pros and 50 promo codes to WallHub Pro. Just follow me on Twitter at HowToMen and you'll be entered in the contest. The first best app of 2019 is MNML Screen Recorder. You know, there aren't that many great screen recorder apps for Android nowadays. A lot of them have ads or are a bit outdated, so it's kind of a relief to finally find one that is simple, easy to use, and records in the best resolution possible. It doesn't even have ads, which should be a plus for a lot of people. A very straightforward app that gets the job done. Of course, I have to throw in my favorite launcher. It's called Launcher 2, and it's not in the Play Store, but on APK Mirror. I'll drop that link right below the like button. Essentially, it's a replication of Google Pixel stock launcher app, but it has a few extra features for customization such as icon pack support, theming, grid size, gestures, backup and restore, and other features you'd find in a typical third-party launcher. If you want to know a great alternative that isn't Nova Launcher, I also recommend Hyperion Launcher. It's pretty feature-packed with plenty of unique features like font configurations, fingerprint authentications for your private apps, very detailed options for themes and so forth. Don't worry, I won't count this recommendation as the third app though. The third app is actually fluid navigation gestures. Now listen, I've had my shares of horrible navbar implementations in the past, but fluid navigation gestures just isn't one of them. Its bubbly animations really bring something unique to the table, and it gives you a bit more screen real estate when compared to the regular Android Pie gesture navbar. Swiping up from the center will jump the phone to the home screen. Swiping and holding will bring up my recents page. Swiping from the left will go back and swiping on the right will bring down the notifications panel. But I can configure the app to launch whatever tasks I'd like with whatever gesture I do, including an action, an app, or a shortcut. Just keep in mind that you won't need to use ADB or have root access to hide your stock navbar. And some features such as launching apps by using the navigation gestures is only available by purchasing the pro version, which costs $1.99. Moving on, PlayJ is a great way to stream your screen with your friends and video chat with them at the same time. The idea is simple, just make sure your friend also has the app, add them by texting them a request, select the app you'd like to show off, and then choose the chat style and hit launch. Once your friend answers the call, he or she will be able to see your screen where you can show them your amazing Angry Bird skills or have them help you with a problem that you're having with your phone. We all know that phones displays are getting bigger each year and these devices are getting harder to use with just one hand. Reaching the top part of the screen requires repositioning your hand so you can tap or swipe a single object. So here's a solution, try out reachability cursor. When swiping from either side of the screen, you can pull up a digital D-pad to control the top part of your phone with a cursor, drag it around to move the cursor and tap on it to click it. The D-pad then disappears when you tap away from it or after a few seconds of inactivity. It's perfect for tapping on those Instagram stories or the address bar in Google Chrome. Another great app that can help you with one-handed use is bottom quick settings. All this does is move your quick settings panel down to the bottom and you can still toggle settings like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Flash, etc. Sure, there are a few settings that require root access to toggle instantly, but everything still works really well. Now, I'm one of those college students who secretly records the professor's hour-long lectures just in case I missed something he said or I didn't understand a particular subject he was talking about. But those voice recordings tend to be really long and I don't enjoy listening to his hour-long lectures all over again, so I just use Otter voice notes to transcribe the recordings automatically. Then I can quickly search something he was talking about like a math problem, and boom, there it is. I also love how this app keeps all your conversations in the cloud so you can quickly access your conversations on other devices. And if you voice record with this app, it will transcribe the conversations in real time, which is next level stuff. If you snap a picture while you record, it will add the visual content to the conversations in line. You can even create groups for inviting people to view and share your recordings. There are plenty more features within this app, huge thumbs up from me. Just the Line is a neat little AR experiment by Google. You can make simple drawings in midair by pressing your finger in the middle of the screen and moving the phone around. 
Every doodle you make will stay in the same spot so you can create some amazing videos. You can even draw with another person if you so choose. Someone on Twitter recommended I check out Iconzi and I found it to be really useful. So if you're an Android customizer, you know the pain of trying to find the best looking icon within the multiple icon packs that you have on your phone. While Iconzi lets you search through all your installed icon packs at the same time to find the perfect icon, it's basically a universal icon searcher, works with whatever launcher you have. Now OnePlus Gestures is the only paid app on this list costing $1.49, but I had to throw it in for all my fellow techies who just want a solid gesture nav bar. One that's similar to Oxygen OS's navigation gestures so you can have the ultimate screen real estate and the freedom of choosing what each swipe does. Sure, you'll need ADB to hide your stock nav bar, but once you do, it'll run without a problem. It's very similar to fluid navigation gestures, it just doesn't have those crazy animations. For those looking to wake up with some YouTube jam, check out Spot on Alarm Clock for YouTube. It's a simple alarm clock that will play YouTube playlists and tracks to wake you up in the morning. That's pretty much all it does, but it's still very useful since I haven't seen a stock clock app do this yet. The same developer who created Spot on for YouTube also made one for Spotify. Now I know the stock Google clock app already supports Spotify, but you can use Spot on as a sleep timer. So once you're listening to your music, you can select how long you like to listen to your playlist, and after the timer is up, Spotify will stop playing. Speaking of music, OneLyrix is the fastest app to pull up lyrics to a song that is playing on your phone. It supports the majority of music services and a ton of songs. You can pull up the lyrics by looking in the notification panel or swiping from the right edge of the screen. You can even download the lyrics for offline use. If you own a tablet or a second phone, you know the struggle of only having your primary phone notify you of incoming texts, calls, Snapchats, or WhatsApp notifications. Well, you can solve this issue by using Bridge to mirror incoming notifications on your main device to your secondary devices. Not only can you read the same notifications, but you can do all the same quick actions such as dismiss, reply, like, delete, and more. And every notification you dismiss on one device will also be dismissed on all your other devices. If you're looking to remap your Google Assistant home button shortcut, then you can use Assistant Shortcuts. Long pressing the home button can now slide down your notification panel, take a screenshot, open an app, turn on the flashlight, and more. If you ever use a Samsung, you probably know that they have a feature called Edge Screen, which allows you to pull up a multitude of panels with your favorite apps, contacts, weather, etc. Well, with Edge Screen S9, you can do the same thing with a few unique panels to choose from. For example, I can have a panel for my favorite apps, contacts, WhatsApp contacts, a calculator, soft keys, tools, weather, music player, a compass, widgets, and more. Plus, you can customize the crap out of this app, so give it a shot. For those who have a notch on their gorgeous 2018 flagship, you can use Nacho Notch to hide it. I know most phones already have an option for this, but a few devices like the Pixel 3 XL hide the notch in a horrible way. For example, the setting to hide the notch is buried deep within the settings under the developer options, and once you hide the groove, the status bar gets dropped below the notch, which gives you less screen space. All Nacho Notch does is change the color of the status bar black, making it better fit with your hidden notch and you can quickly enable it within the quick settings panel. Sip News is a great way to get notified about trending topics that are related to tech, and also a great way to get insight on what other people think. I love how simple and straightforward the stories are, and a lot of them are very interesting. It's kind of funny how I'm showing you all these apps that will make you use your phone even more. However, the next app is a great way to help you use your phone less. It's called Thrive Away. Once you tap on begin and set the timer, the app won't let you use your phone for that fixed amount of time. It'll block all apps, notifications, calls, and text, However, you can give a few contacts VIP access so they can contact you anyways, and it will auto-reply to messages letting them know that you're taking a break from your cell phone. On top of that, it can block specific apps for a certain amount of time. The last app on this list is Empty Folder Cleaner. As the name implies, it will remove all empty folders found within your internal storage left behind from third-party applications. Anyways, that concludes the best 20 Android apps of 2019. Hope you guys have a great year. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at HowToMan for a chance at winning a promo code to some amazing wallpaper apps or a $10 Google Play gift card. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Kapow!